a couple of words you thought you'd never see together, dynamic and swift. Swift, by uh, your, most of your experience, doesn't seem very dynamic, uh, considering where we are all coming from, hopefully, uh, from Objective-C. But if you've seen some of the docs, some of the keywords, we have a few things that allow us to have uh, dynamic access in our uh, Swift language. We have the dynamic keyword, with let which lets you uh, add uh, dynamic properties. So that means that you can uh, add this keyword to your classes, your methods, and your properties to enable the dynamic dispatch mechanism from the uh, Objective-C runtime uh, to be used every time you call those properties. Uh, you can also use Objective-C, the, the attribute there, and NS object uh, to uh, incorporate all the full stack of uh, dynamic accessors. And the thing is, is the dynamic nature of Objective-C is, is really hard to, to use, uh, but you get a lot of uh, fun stuff. So you can interpret messages uh, based on uh, using these, these methods here. But some of the, the features of uh, the dynamic properties of, of Objective-C are really useful. So something like target action, which is very dynamic because it, it lets you separate the method call that you're uh, calling from the actual object. So you can uh, call these things dynamically uh, very easily. Uh, method swizzling is also a thing that I just wanted to add in here as a property of dynamic languages that, or of at least of Objective-C that is uh, maybe useful, but also very dangerous. Um, but we don't want to do that. The one thing I really wanted to focus on was uh, the responder chain. The responder chain is a very useful feature in Mac apps because it lets you uh, show or enable and disable menu items uh, just by inspecting the uh, elements that actually respond to a particular selector in that chain. So what if I wanted to actually do something like uh, have uh, something like a responder chain in my app? So we can have uh, this little code demo here that I put together uh, that we can say uh, we've got this first handler type, and we assign it a variable, and we set the second handler type uh, to say that the, the next handler for the, first one, for the second one will be the first, and the third handler will use the second uh, instance uh, and pass it on, et cetera, et cetera. So we could do these and make a, a nice little chain out of this. And just for you, uh, just to show you, uh, we have all of those types uh, subclass from a little operation that also subclasses from NS object. Now you might see something that's pretty familiar here. Uh, you have this forwarding targeted for a selector. Now this is very, uh, this is right out of the NS object API uh, that lets you specify a next target in case this particular object doesn't implement that message. Right, so and we have some debugging things to kind of see if this demo actually works. So when I want to call something on the third object that actually doesn't have this do something method implemented, uh, what will actually happen is this. If I'm doing this in Playgrounds, a nice big demo fail, right? So instead, there's actually one weird trick where you can actually chain objects together using that forwarding target for selector to actually send messages from one object to the next, even though it doesn't actually implement that particular uh, method. Right? You just give it this any object, and you're not casting the, uh, the, initial lays, uh, the instantiation of the third handler type, in this case, to any object. You're actually saying that the, var the variable, the property here, is in any object. So now when you go and call it, you can actually see in the demo that it will actually work. And I know it's also obviously slides, but you can actually go ahead and try this out on your own. Just copy and paste the code from this link into Xcode Playgrounds, and you can see uh, Dynamic Swift in action and try this on your, on your own. And that's Dynamic Swift. Thanks. <laughs>